Well, we've all heard that feedback is a gift, but sometimes it doesn't feel so much like a gift. But good or bad, learning from those around us is most of what we learn about ourselves in our lives. And it's also how we learn about the ways we do things, the ways we complete projects. So if you can't accept compliments, chances are you're equally as hesitant to accept criticism. According to Maslow, the self-actualized person is that person who's made it through the necessary developmental patterns to achieve the highest stage of personal development. That person can take both criticism and praise very well. While CEOs and leaders in general usually get to the top by being able to fix problems. Therefore, often what they are best at is seeing what is actually wrong with an employee or a project rather than what is right. That lends itself to a naturally disproportionate amount of criticism in the workplace than praise. But according to Inc.com, research shows that positive questions about employees' goals helps release dopamine in their brains. Continually criticizing what employees are doing wrong makes them lose focus and shut down completely. This carries over, of course, into your family life, as you might know. I noticed lately that if I tell, I have a little son with Down syndrome, and I noticed that if I tell him to clean his room in a harsh or rushed tone, because I'm tired or in a hurry or whatever, he moves really slow. But if I tell him, I, I can tell him really practically anything, including to clean this room, in a nice, upbeat, encouraging tone, and he'll do it quickly and most joyfully. He hides his emotions less than a typically developing person. So it became very clear to me in his demonstration, see this is how much we learn from our kids, how much our tone matters with our children, with employees, and even with other relationships in our life. Since busy people are, well, busy, they tend to rush through the day barking orders in an attempt to get more done quickly. I do it all the time. I am famous for it. But data says that if you take the time to encourage those you are asking to complete a project by listening to them and helping them engage your vision for the project, it actually goes much quicker and the quality output is remarkably better. Well, author of The Hidden Driver of Excellent, Daniel Goldman, uh, interviewed Richard Boyatskis, who tracked the brain activity in criticism and praise. He explained that talking about your positive goals and dreams actually activates brain centers that open you up to new possibilities. But if you change the conversation to what you should do or what you should fix, it shuts that person down. Well, this wasn't just his research. This has been confirmed in other research before, reported by CNN. The University of Michigan Business School compared team performance to frequencies of praise and criticism. The best performing teams, as you might guess, used about six times as many positive comments for every single negative one. But negative feedback or criticism is absolutely necessary as well for effective teams to work well together, whether it's your family, your business, or your child rearing, whatever. There's a proper way to do it. It's a lot like discipline in children. My contention is that it should never be done in anger or with emotion. Parents should wait until they cool down and then exact the discipline. Well, Jack Zinger says, it's like when we watch a movie. There's often background music that sort of leads you to know something is about to happen, good or bad. The audience is warned. Ideally, managers should handle it the same way. They should provide a similar signal that provides an accurate context for their message. It should be somewhat predictable, whether what is coming is positive or negative, most importantly, criticism should never be delivered in the, in the company of others. It should have the utmost privacy. So that's really important. The opposite is true, though, for praise, ironically. Praise should be done with conviction and emotional connection. It can be public, and it should be very specific. The other thing about both praise and criticism is that both should be solicited from team members for the leader as well. Employees should be given a safe invitation to say what they like about a company and what they think could be done better. And the same is true with children. While authority should all the while be maintained, safe commentary should be invited. Bosses should ask, what can I do to be a more effective leader for you? Parents should ask, what can our family do better? And what do you wish our family would do better as a team? Your response as the leader is critical too. You should write it down to show that person you're actually listening and absorbing their words because words do matter and they need to know that you heard them.